But generally speaking, I think, Harry, you'd agree that left wing is all about collectivism. Yeah? Economic. Economic, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about here. Yeah. So the left wing is, is determined by collectivism. The idea, if you can't get your head around that, think of it as being us, all of us, society, socialism, you know, it all kind of ties together. Socialism is about the idea of a, a concept of, of a sort of unity of people. You listen to trade union uh, sort of rhetoric and so on. That is all about united, we stand, divided, we fall. It's us, a group, whatever that group might be. Right-wing economics, which was encapsulated by Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher, is all about the individual. You do what's right for yourself. And a skeptic might say, you do what's right for yourself, and I won't swear, but to the rest of the population. To hell with the rest of the population. Okay? So generally speaking, that's the difference between left and right. But when you think about it, it's never as simple as that, is there? Because even a, an ardent lefty is going to believe in some private ownership, and even an ardent righty, if there is such a word, is going to believe in some sort of collectivism. For example, paying for streetlights. You can't have streetlights, well you could, I guess, in theory, have them sponsored individually by companies or people. But we all need streetlights, we all need the fire service, we all need the ambulance service, we all need an army, we all need a police force. So even the most ardent right wing, even Thatcher didn't believe in privatising everything. Hayek did. Yeah. <laughs> but he was, never, he was the advisor, not the politician. <laughs> well, I've actually got a friend who believes everything should be privatised except the army and the courts. He's one, he's one short of Hayek. He's just one step down, but he believes that everything should be privatised. Even the footpath outside your strip your house, you should be able to buy it where people push their baby buggies and so on, and then charge them like a sort of 17th century toll system on the road, 10p every time. Anyway, that's another story. And I'm talking generalities here. So what left-wing means, oh, let me go back one. Give me an example there from what you, you see here, folks, of some left-wing policies. Give me some example of left-wing policies. But it's in the news now, because Corbyn started to reintroduce these things. Go on, Harry. Nationalisation. Right, nationalisation, bringing the railways back into, into public collective ownership. Nationalisation is a big <coughs> idea. Anything else? And the thing is, with your generation, they've been off the agenda for so long, 20, 30 years, really, your generation has not even been introduced them. This is one reason why Corbyn's captured your generation's imagination. It's new thinking to you, to me and Chris. It goes back to the 70s and beyond. Well, for me, the 70s. <laughs> Chris is a bit younger. What about anything else? Left wing policy, yeah. It's NHS one. Yes, very much so. The NHS, so the collective provision of healthcare without having to pay for it. So it's possibly the most left wing thing, th thing this country's ever done. And it's also one of the most popular. What else? Think about collective, 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 doing things together. Paying a license fee for the BBC. Yeah, <laughs> ironically. <laughs> Paying a license fee. And like I said, maybe with your generation, because you might experience it, you probably don't know what something is left wing. Tell me about right wing policy. Because that's what you've been surrounded by all your lives so far. Privatisation. Privatisation, which is the flip side of nationalisation. So taking something into private hands rather than in public hands. Charging students to go to university. Yeah. Student fees. Very right wing idea. The consumer pays. You're consuming education now as you sit there. This is consumption. And I'm a provider of a service. Am I, Chris? Is that my official title? Really, really. Senior, but not senior lecturer, senior provider of the service. We continue to resist that. Yeah. <laughs> Let me help you out. So, state ownership, nationalised industries, higher taxes. When was the last time you ever heard a politician arguing for higher taxes? Redistribution of wealth, particularly on the rich. Public investment in public services. HS2, I guess, could be. High welfare payments. Within living memory, I've been on welfare, believe it or not, and it's a hell of a struggle. I think about three pounds a week in the end when I pay all my bills. It's impossible. Strong trade unions. When was the last time you had a politician arguing for stronger trade unions? More company regulation. This is the one that gets big business. Big business does not, be like, does not like regulation. Big business in 1999 resisted the minimum wage as much as it could. Blair had such a huge majority in the House of Commons they pushed it through. One of the few things that he did to his credit in my opinion. But they pushed through the minimum wage. Had we not had the minimum wage now, some of you in this room might be earning three pounds an hour. Big companies don't like paying wages, folks. Do they? They don't like giving you pay rises and so on. That's a left wing idea. Not even that. No, because it supports the, the masses, if you like. It supports all of us. You know? It's the collectivism argument. Conversely, on the right wing, 
this is what makes intuitive sense to people because it's all about looking after yourself and that makes you know self-preservation is a very strong human instinct privatization lower taxes lower taxes my friend who believes that everything should be privatized he personally thinks that taxes are immoral immoral he thinks he shouldn't have to pay any at all it's his money he's earned that he should keep it that's quite a compelling argument isn't it quite a seductive argument Private companies should provide, provide public services like Carillion. Remember that recently collapsed? Who was the other one? Serco? Capita. Capita. Serco, no doubt, will be going soon. Capita, who provide the IT infrastructure at this university. It doesn't surprise me at all. Lower welfare payments, reduced trade union power, and less company regulation. Those are right wing ideas. Right. Everybody got that now, yeah? Okay. So, left wing collectivism, right wing individualism. So, if the BBC really were left wing, when, what would we expect the BBC to promote? These ideas over here, right? Harry, go on. I, don't I thought you might quibble with this point. Um, I, I don't <laughs> think anyone claims that the BBC are economically left wing, ah. but socially and culturally. It, and that's another story altogether, and it's much yeah. murkier, because that's when you get into the argument about authoritarianism versus liberalism. Right? So you're saying that the BBC is liberal in terms of equal opportunities. Anyone who's ever seen an episode of Mock the Week will know what I'm talking about, you know, like all that's what I was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I would say that's social issues. That, that's yeah, how social issues. rather than I'm, I'm purely talking about economics. Oh, economic, then. Yeah, purely talking economic. But that's another story, it's a bit more complex. Because some people on the right, David Cameron for example, he was very very supportive of same sex marriage. A lot of crusty old Tories from the Shires, they're very authoritarian. They don't even believe that homosexuality should be legalised, still. You know? So that's a social issue. But there is a, 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 a wing of the Conservative Party that are basically libertarian. They believe in the legalisation of marijuana, for example. The legalisation of all those personal choice things. So, that, so that's where left wing, right wing, Blair and Cameron were virtually like that on those issues. So that's where it kind of gets a bit murky. But just bear with me because we're just talking economics today. So the BBC should be over there. What about public opinion? Think about public opinion, as you'd hope in a democracy, public opinion goes across the whole spectrum. And all of us believe in a little bit of right wing and a little bit of left wing, don't we? We all love the NHS, most people do. That's a very left wing thing. So public opinion which is right across the board. And there's a fuzzy line in the middle to decide whether you're right wing or left wing. Very difficult to define. This is where social sciences is a bit vague. But generally speaking, left wing, who holds the views? Left wing organisations or organisations with left wing views, environmentalists, Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth, organisations like that, they believe on restrictions on companies that they can't pollute. That's a left wing, you could say it's a collective idea. Environmentalism is all about us and our survival on the planet as a group of seven billion human beings. That's collectivism. Right wing is a sense of don't want environmental standards. If you look back in the history, trade unions, of course, collectivism in the workplace. Some NGOs, Oxfam, not had a good press recently, but they believe in poverty reduction for all of us. Minority parties, Plaid Cymru, SNP, maybe. <coughs> Certainly Sinn Fein in Northern Ireland. Some writers and public intellectuals. And the Labour Party now, the Labour Party now is, is rediscovering its left wing roots. Right wing, Labour Party pre 2016. You look at the policies of Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, with a couple of exceptions, minimum wage was one, they kind of expanded the, the trade union rights to, in the workplace, but not very much. I'm looking at Christopher and Nod here, didn't they? A little bit? A uh, little. I would, <coughs> I would say pre-2010. 2010? Oh, really? Miller Band changed it? Yeah, it definitely did. Okay. In terms of their manifesto, if you look at the manifesto yeah. of Corbyn and Miller Band, Okay. A lot of similarities. I'll, 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 take, get, I'll take your broader point. Now. I'll take your point as well, I should say, pre 2010, I wasn't sure. Liberal Democrats, yeah, possibly. Sometimes they make noises that are left wing noises, but generally. So pre 2010, certainly pre Corbyn, most of the political parties were on the right, really. Because there was nobody arguing for higher taxes, there was nobody arguing for nationalised industries. So most of the narrative was on the right. As we saw from uh, political companies, if you remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, where all the parties were clustered on the right and everyone in the room was clustered in the left. That's why I get what I do with my groups at six different universities. The students are always... Yeah, I think I've done bottom, 600 students. Bottom left. We should yeah. get those results put together. The other important point here, folks, is companies. 
Big companies typically believe in privatisation, lower taxes, uh, providing public services, obviously, because they make money out of it. Uh, they believe in reduced trade union power because it's a threat to the profit uh, making process. And of course, they believe in lower company regulation. So companies very rarely come out and say, we, we say vote Tory, but they do essentially believe in right wing economic policies. And by extension, most newspapers as well. So the Daily Mail, the Sun, the Telegraph, the Times, they're all privately owned and they generally believe in right wing policies, and that's what their editorials say. So there's only actually really and this is debatable, two left-wing newspapers in the UK, The Guardian and The Daily Mirror. So most of the power, powerful organisations traditionally have been to the right. The BBC, however, this is where the BBC should provide a saviour for all of us, because it should sit in the middle, not just of the political parties and the groups, but of the arguments, of the ideas. So the BBC, if it's true to its impartiality uh, obligations, should be straight down the middle. And the way that you would do, do that, and like I say, journalistically it's very different to do, is that you involve debates about the merits of nationalisation or privatisation. Okay, so the BBC, that's what the Charter says, the BBC Charter says it should be in the middle. The critics of the BBC said it's over there on the left, along with Corbyn and Oxfam and trade unions and so on. 